Good morning, afternoon, and evening leading in motion followers. I wanted to share with you just a few thoughts today on feedback. And I'll say this first, I realize that we're getting ready to go into the holidays and it might be the last thing on your mind, but it's also a time when folks tend to be thinking about, well, what are your goals for 2019? And what are you wanting to accomplish in the new year? Especially if you are in an organization, if you're running a business or if you're helping to, to lead a business, there's probably a lot of questions that you're in about, well, what's next year gonna be about? And so before you go into the holidays and get all foggy and lose track of those things, and before you start setting your goals, I wanted to share just a few thoughts about something that I absolutely love, which is the process of giving and receiving feedback. Now, let me start here. You may or may not know about me that early in my career, just after grad school, I, my primary work was actually gathering and also delivering 360 feedback processes, deep dive interview-based 360, to executives and senior leaders at large organizations, corporations, government organizations, and also nonprofits. And through that process, I got to know a couple things. One, I got to know that people in general, you may be the exception, but most people, many people, are not so into feedback. In fact, a lot of people hate it. And they don't like receiving it, and they also don't like giving it, and there's a lot of turmoil, and frankly, people aren't very good at it either. The other thing that I got to know is that feedback changes lives. So personally, I actually love the process of giving and receiving feedback. It's something that I have fallen in love with over time. Both feedback that happens retroactively, so hey, this thing happened, did you know that it impacted me in this way, you know, here's what you did, like here's a way you could do better, that kind of feedback, but also embodied leadership feedback that takes place in the moment or that can happen in real time as a reflection. So let me give you an example of what that might look like. This past weekend, I was at a retreat with the women who went through my year-long program, Be the Change. And we were doing some role plays, and the whole intention of the role play was to put them in a situation where they were having a difficult conversation with someone that they needed to go back and talk to in order to forward their, their goals and their leadership. And we were actually um, set up in a way that I was mirroring and a few other people were observing and mirroring what was happening in their body language and the way that they were speaking while they were having this conversation. So one woman, let's call her Emma, just for the sake of giving her a name, was in a negotiation with her boss. And what we saw in Emma's body was that um, her, the person who was playing her boss was doing a really good job. He was actually, she, he, was actually um, coming back in and questioning her. Every time she'd make a request, they would say, well, um, but have you thought about this? And what about this thing you said you were going to do? You know, have you done that yet? And Emma's whole body, as he would, as the person playing her boss would come in, would just start to shrink back a tiny bit. And she would start to collapse a little. And what she would say was, yeah, you're right. It's true. And so in her sort of physiology and in her mindset, she was taking on his feedback and starting to lose her ground in the context of what she was advocating or negotiating for. Not a big deal on one hand, but um, you could see in the conversation how that was really leading to him um, coming back in and almost taking the ground away and using that as a reason why he wasn't gonna actually have the negotiation with her or why he wasn't gonna give her what she wanted. So we were able to reflect that back to Emma in the moment, and she could really see that that was related to what she does. She's actually a really great, she's a, she's a learner. She's a person who is always looking for how she can grow. And so in some ways, she was taking it on as part of her learning, going, yeah, I'll take a look at that. I'll go learn more about that. And pulling back and, and you know, sort of metaphorically getting pushed across the room in the conversation because of that. So in seeing that about herself, she was able to practice something different. And what she practiced was really bringing her chest forward physiologically and holding her ground, not pushing, not getting aggressive, not disagreeing, still agreeing and taking on the feedback he was giving, but at the same time holding her ground and being able to say yes and I also am making this request and here's why. So for Emma, that was a pretty big lightning bolt moment. She's now gone back to her um, work and her life and is starting to have different kinds of conversations with her boss. And through that kind of feedback, that kind of reflection, which is what I do ongoingly with my clients all the time, um, I've been able to support various people over the course of this year to negotiate promotions, to ask for what they wanted, to have a conversation with a spouse about moving into a different house, 
all the things that we're wanting in our life, just being able to see ourselves and how we show up in the conversation that might be the reason it's not going that well or we might not be getting what we want. So there's a whole host of things that one can give and receive feedback on. This idea of challenging conversations is just one of them. But I wanted to offer that because if you are a person who has been thinking, I want to lead in a bigger way next year, or I have this project that I'm taking on, or I'm moving into a new role, or I want to move into a new role, or I'm not getting the traction or making the kind of money that I'm wanting to make in my business, if that is happening for you, I would wager a guess. In fact, I would put, I'd put money down on it. I would bet on the fact that there's something about the way you're playing, the way you're showing up, the way you're doing what you do that you cannot see, that you're not fully aware of, and that is part of why you're not getting the results that you want or, you're, or why there is a ceiling or why there's a way that you can get better results than you're getting. And if that is the case, the first step to have a different experience or to get to reach the goals that you have in 2019 is not to just go do more of the same thing. The first step is actually to get an honest, clean reflection that can help you see how to tweak what you're doing so that you can get different, better, and more um, fulfilling results in the new year. So many of you already know that I am offering um, complimentary coaching discovery sessions over the next couple of weeks. Probably I will offer them until the first, maybe second week of January as I'm launching the next cohort of Be The Change in January. And most of what happens in that conversation is that we provide a mirror for you again, in this way of a reflection. So we really help you see the things you might not be seeing about how you're showing up that could make a difference towards reaching the goals that you currently have. That's pretty much it. So if you would like to have that experience, if you think that there's something that you could learn from being in a one-on-one -on -one interaction where you get some mirroring, you get some feedback, I encourage you to reach out and schedule a conversation with me. I would love to talk to you. Also, by the way, this is completely unrelated, but if you're enjoying this Be Hopeful shirt that I'm wearing, um, I've just recently met the folks who founded Lingo Wears, which is where the shirt comes from, and acknowledging that it's holiday time, um, they've got very cool shirts, pillows, different kinds of gifts that have words on them, and what they're doing is actually giving back to um, young people, to students, to, to school-age children, um, a mindfulness packet that they get to practice in when you purchase one of their things. So. Um, just a shout out to Lingo Wears for what they're doing, which I think is awesome. And if you'd like to connect, I'd love to talk to you soon.